Hey, this is Chuck from Monocoque Metalworks. Today I'm going to do one of my favorite things here, which is to repair this wrecked center section. Actually, you can hear my voice echoing off of it. I just said a few minutes ago, kind of involuntarily, to Brent across the shop, who is behind the camera right now, I'm walking along here and I was like, dude, this is a beautiful center section. Now, I'm probably the only person that thinks that, but I know that I can repair this just about perfectly and I don't have to mess with any of this. Look at this. These flat areas and this crease are some of the hardest things to do. The center of the power bulge isn't too tough, but to me this is beautiful and it's freshly back from the sandblaster. Um, it's ready to go. You can see the louvers are not blasted because this is destined to be a welded louver bonnet for a 61. So we're going to cut those out and go ahead and put in a pair of welded louver panels. We'll show all that later on in some of our other videos. But today's video series is how we're going to repair this. And this is what got me started in this business. Um, when I was a kid, my insurance company eventually said, I, I don't know what these bonnets are, but we're not buying any more of them. Um, and so necessity is the mother of invention. The next thing you know, I went out and bought a set of cheap hammers and dollies and started having at it myself. So we should be able to bring this right out. We'll show you this from a different angle in a minute, but I want to show you, I've laid out the tools that I'm going to use. I've got a nice little work area here. This is what we're going to use to get started. Now, the, people will tell you, oh, there's so much stretch in there and you, you're not going to be able to get that out, but there, the stretch is only in localized places. So see right here on this hard crease, there's stretch along the outside edge, but on the inside it's fine. All of this metal here is basically undamaged and just in the wrong place. So what you want to try to do as much of as possible is to relocate this metal back to where it was without stretching it anymore. Now, if you could magically kind of massage this, if it was like a, a wet lasagna noodle or something, that would be great. But because it's steel, you've got to really put some force into it to move it. And every time you hit it, you're, you run the risk of putting some stretch into it. So we want to get this back as close as we can without stretching it anymore. And then of course, when we're all done, we're going to use the shrinking disc to kind of bring everything back down. Um, so we will start out with, Brent will stand there and hold it upside down. We'll have the nose down here and I'll start trying to move this back into shape with just some basic rubber mallets and a shot bag. This I can see that's probably not too healthy, but this is full of lead, lead shot. And it weighs about, I think it weighs 70 pounds. I don't know, it's very hard to lift up. But that just gives us a nice soft surface. We'll throw that down on the floor and we'll start moving it that way. And then after that, I will do most of the work with these two tools here, which are my favorites and really what I use the most in the shop on this kind of work and all over. This is just a slapper. Now, this is a very cheap one that actually came out of a Harbor Freight door skinning kit. I have the expensive Martin Slapper right here. This one's probably cost about five bucks. This one's, I don't know, $70, $80. But this one is a lot lighter. Now, it's, uh, it's a better material, and I have broken several of these right there. But you can see where this is a much thicker piece, and I like the weight for moving steel. And then this dolly I have had since I was 20 years old. This came in my first hammer and dolly kit. I think I paid $15 for it um, at a swap meet used. Everything in it is junk. This is a low quality dolly that is cast. Um, dollies are cast or forged or steel or cast iron. But this one is perfect for working an E-type nose. You can get it, get it right in there, and it's got the perfect shape for me. And then this is a compound curve here, so I can use this to smooth things out. Now, I, years ago, bought this Martin 
uh, I don't know what you call it, a giant spoon slapper, whatever. I think it cost close to $100. The idea was that I was going to use this for the same shape, reaching up in there, and uh, wouldn't hurt my arm as much. After years of doing this, I've got something wrong with my elbow here, and you can see I've already got the Advil out. But I just keep going back to this, you know, and I'll hold this in there like this. You can see where, because it's a cheap material, it gets dented, especially if there's like some MIG welding or anything. And I just gave it a nice little resurface smoothing this morning, so it's ready to go. Inevitably, when I do this work, I end up with every hammer in the shop over here, so I've got all my favorite hammers. Hammers are kind of the opposite. With the dollies, I seem to gravitate toward the cheaper ones. Everybody's got their favorites. With the hammers, the expensive ones are a lot better, and the heads are hardened, and you won't get any dents. This is my favorite hammer here. Um, it's got a nice little spade on it. You can reach around and, and get into things. Um, this one is a cheaper hammer with a fiberglass handle. It's got a pick end on it. Rarely use this. The one thing that you will not see here is a shrinking hammer with the serrated edges on the top. Just stay there. I'm going to grab one of those just to show you. two of them. This is a shrinking hammer. Um, you can see it's got the serrated edges. The idea is that when there's something coming up, you can hit this and it won't fan out and uh, stretch like that. It'll just grab it and push it down. When you buy a kit of hammers at home, if, if you're not a professional doing this, take this one out of the box and throw it away the second you get it. Don't use this. There is a very rare circumstance where you need to use this and it's any good. You can see that one's hardly got a mark on it. You, you don't need that. This is the good hammer that's got the straight spade edge that I do use, but as you can see, we've painted it yellow because a couple times I've grabbed it by accident and hit on the shrinking head. Throw away the shrinking hammer. You don't need it. All right, that's my speech on hammers and dies. You see, I've got a I've got this hammer. Sometimes I use this to move that metal around in addition to the, uh, to the mallets. And then I've got a, just a little rubber block here with some sandpaper. After I get things going, you'll see where I'll sand this across, and that'll show me the high spots to keep going. So that's it for this segment. Um, we're going to do a bunch of segments and piece them all together and make a larger video. And so we're going to stop here, and I'll show it to you from a different angle head on next and where we're going to position it to get the work started. Okay, this is just going to be a quick little segment to show you how I, you know, everybody's got their own thing. I hang these from the ceiling just like this with the back edge on the floor, the main support member there. Sometimes I'll prick that up, but I will either stand or sit here on a stool and be able to work this like this. Now next, we, like I said, we're going to flip it over and start pushing this out. But what's nice about this is that it is a virgin wreck. Nobody else has gotten in here before me and beat this thing a thousand times with a ball-peen hammer. That will stretch the hell out of this. The, the kiss of death is when they ball-peen hammer it kind of like similar to what it needs to be, and then they hit it with a DA sander and thin it all out. We don't have any of that here. We've got full thickness on the metal. We're going to move it around. You can see where some after the wreck, it looks like somebody put like the jaws of life or some kind of grabber thing in here and pulled it out. That, that won't really hurt us. And then over here, it looks like there was a little typical E-type fender bender where they the bumper blade kind of comes back in here and some body shop in the past put a dent puller in here pulled it out and actually leaded it so I mean that might have happened back in the 60s so next we're going to start pushing this metal out it'll start it'll go back into shape real quick but then to get it a smooth perfect shape will take more and more time Okay, so I think that was about 15, maybe 20 minutes. Brent stood back there and held it upside down on the sandbag. You can see that with shot bag, it's got shot in it. There's the shot bag. There's the tools I used. A couple rubber mallets. I had the dolly so I could kind of wrap the mouth a little bit. And then I had that um, spade hammer to get in there because there was a tight little crease right here. So all I've done now is try to get those big creases out 
I've tried to be gentle with it and always be thinking push instead of hammer. And now I've got a crease going this way here and here. And so I'm gonna work the top for a little while and continue to get this a little more smooth. Again, there's gonna be hours and hours and hours into this thing, but I'm gonna to try to get it a little more smooth and I'm just gonna to start to put the shape together around the mouth using the contour gauges. You gotta put the shape in before you start smoothing things out or you'll get into trouble. All right, okay, we're back. Uh, since the last clip, it's been about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, I think, not quite two hours. And I've been picking away at this um, nonstop ever since then. You can see I've generally got my shape in now. I'm still, it's time to go to lunch, so that's why I'm filming now. I'm still working this corner. This, this corner's being a little tricky here. It's tight, so I'm still trying to pull this out and match this corner over here. Over here, I haven't done much. Um, we did put a little more stretch into this than I wanted to. She was kind of fighting me to get back to this shape. And now I'm gradually, you see I've done some of the smoothing with the dolly and slapper because I had to get these creases out to kind of relieve them to let me get in where I wanted to get. This metal wants to be back to where it was. Um, so it'll kind of help guide you, but we also have our contour gauges. Now they don't fit quite right yet and I'm still messing around with this nose some but you can see that we are in the ballpark and so now what I need to do is continue to shape but I can start smoothing as I shape and so this whole area in here needs to be smooth but it also needs to go down a little bit and that's perfect because it tends to go down as you smooth it now this area here also needs to be smooth and it wants to come up a little bit so I'll keep all that in mind as I continue to work this and then I, this crease here is kind of like a double crease it's going to be a little difficult but we'll get that and you can see I've taken all those tight little locks out in here um, it's all starting to come back so this is coming together very nicely um, I'm very happy with how it's going I think smoothing it is going to be a little tricky because of these tight long creases but we'll get it so see you in a couple more hours okay it's been a couple more hours um, my arm is killing me so I gotta I gotta stop here for now um, but I've done all the initial dolly and slapper work and smoothed this out. So if you come over here, you can still see here, you go over there. You can still see, of course, these are where the creases were. And they're still a little high. You can feel them. See, we got a long one in here. Then we had like a, a tight little locked in crease here. And I've gotten them out without, you know, a lot of times you'll see them still existing after other people have done it. But... The dolly and slapper will leave kind of a map of, of where everything was. And so as I run my hands over here, it's still kind of lumpy. All of these marks are from the mallet when I had to get that out. Um, and I, because this is a much tighter curve, the dolly and slapper work smooths this out more. Not quite there yet with the contour gauges, but I'm real, real close. And I'm going to have to do a lot of shrinking up here to bring down the high spots and bring down these creases a little bit. And I think that as I shrink that, it's going to pull this all together some and put me right into where the contour gauge needs to be. So for now, I need a break. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld up this little hole. This is from where it got crushed into the inner valance. We see this all the time. There's a mark here and there's a mark up here. Um, this could have been one of those little rectangular speed nut things because sometimes they're welded on and they stick out some. But I'm going to weld that up. Over here we had those dent puller holes and there's actually a little bit of lead still here maybe. So I'm going to sand that up, weld up these holes, weld this. And then also um, I'm not done with this corner I gotta still kind of psych that out a little bit. And then right here, this is very common in wrecks. You see I've gotten a crack here. And it might not look like much, but it's really causing me a lot of trouble. I've got a lump here and I can't get everything situated the way I need it to. So I've gotta go ahead and weld this up now so that I this isn't uh, loose like that. So do a little welding 
and then I will come back and do some more shrinking. But that, that's it for this clip now. We'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, it's been a couple more hours. Now we're at the end of the day. So we have now put in a full day's work and I'm really happy with where we are. I thought this would turn out great and it has. So I've got my shape back. I've compared it side to side. I've put my contour gauges on. They don't fit just right, but I think once we get some of this stretch out by shrinking, it's gonna roll in and we're just gonna fall right into place. Um, this is actually probably less lumpy than it looks. You can still feel it like this. The shrinking disc will smooth this right out. I welded up these little dent puller holes that were in there and took out that little crease. There was that hole here from where it hit the inner balance. Welded that up. Did some repair here, and this is, this is gonna give me a little trouble, and that'll probably never be perfect. That'll have to be finished off a little filler. But this is in better shape now. And I had to weld along here. And I think uh, we are looking really, really good. So if you want to run around and kind of take a shot from the side there. Um, of course, you know, the farther away you get, the better it looks. But she is looking real, real good. So that's it. That's one day's worth of work. Probably put in almost another full day just finishing it up. And uh, that's how you can take something that's really mashed up and, and bring it back. Thanks for watching. Hey, this is Chuck. Good morning. It's another day. So we're on our second day of working on this. And I've just started the shrinking process with the shrinking disc. I've been shrinking on this with the disc for about half an hour. And I'm just kind of starting to get the lay of the land here. If you come in, the I don't know where who's going where. You over there. The, the, the shiny spots, which are going to show up dark for you on this video, they are the high spots. And you can see, like, here's where a crease was that went this way. And then here's another one. And then here are some of our creases that went the other way and like kind of the, the high spots around them. But you're getting kind of a ghost image now of the repairs that we've made. Now, it looks probably a lot worse in the video than it is. This actually feels really smooth. And you could put a skim coat of filler on here, block sand it down, and you'd be, you'd be good to go. If you look here, and actually, why don't you go over here, because I feel like maybe the, the angle's better. You can see where, again, the shiny spots and the dark spots are where the shrinking, ditch, shrinking disc is touching. Here's the shrinking disc. Um, mine, I need a new one, actually. It's supposed to be dead flat. Mine's going a little concave, but that's okay, because I'm always working these curved spaces. But see, we're taking a big flat disc like this, and we're going across. Now, what happens is, the disc only touches the high spots and it makes them really hot. And you're putting that heat into it and that shrinks it. So you'll come along like this, you're hitting the high spots, you're not hitting the low spots, so you're putting heat into that peak. And of course this is exaggerated, but you're coming along and hitting that peak and then the heat is just kind of shrinking it down. You're doing that over and over and over. So now what I've got, you can see right here, what I was gonna show you is, I've got a low spot here, a pretty good size low spot. Now these are all highs and lows as they go through like the work we've done, but right here I've got a big low spot. So I need to decide, am I gonna try to pull this back up or am I gonna keep shrinking around it until everything goes down around it? And I'm at the point now where I've decided I wanna start pulling some things up. So right here was where one of those locks was and right here was where the other one was. So you can see that they are both kind of high right now compared to everything else around them. But it's time to do a little more hammer and dolly work, which gets harder and harder because it's harder and harder to see where you're going. Um, but that's, that's it. So we'll, we'll keep doing a little more, a little more. And then when we're done, this shrinking process kind of burnishes the metal, turns it into almost chrome. So at the very end, we're going to scuff this with a 40 grit disc on a angle grinder with a flat pad behind it and just scuff that shiny surface all down. 
but we are not going to use that to smooth it. We're doing the smoothing now. Now that will smooth it just a little bit, but we want to keep going on this until we've got it as smooth as possible. That's it. We'll check back in in a bit. Okay, we're coming down the home stretch on the shrinking. Um, I have been at this now for about another hour and a half since the last video was taken, and it's been shrinking, hammer and dolly, shrinking, hammer and dolly. And so you can see right here, I'm feeling a little spot that I want to hammer and dolly a little bit. But if you come over, you can see where there's a lot more of the shiny stuff. Right here was a high spot. That's where that lock was. So there was a lot of stretch in there to get it out. So you can see where this has all been shrunken down. Um, same thing over here it was kind of like a lock from those two creases coming together. So that's been shrunken down. Feels great here and it feels great here and all in here. It's, a, it's, it's doing a little bit of this here. But um, if you see, like if you spray, this is my soapy water that I use to cool off from the shrinking and the soap gives it a little lubricant. You know, it's, it's basically there. It's, it's got a smooth surface and you can see how the soap suds go on it. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. See, it, that shows you that what you're seeing is, is kind of uh, deceiving. It's like a ghost image. This is really a smooth surface now. And so what I'm gonna do, because I've kind of lost, I can't see where I'm going anymore. I'm gonna scuff this down with a 40 grit disc just a little, just barely. I'm just gonna, because I don't wanna remove metal. So I'm just gonna scuff it down, get this shiny surface off, and then I'm, I'm not gonna start over, but it's gonna give me a better idea of, you know, what, what else I have left to do. And that's pretty much gonna be it. So uh, we're almost done. All right, I've done what I said I was gonna do. I'm just videoing myself right now. I took the 40 grit disc, and I just scuffed this down lightly to get the uh, hardened top surface off. And you can see where I've got little low spots now all over the place that I just could not see before. So these are very low. Well, not very low. They're hardly below the surface at all. And if I push down a little more with the disc, I could have probably sanded a lot of these out. But I just want to go ahead and go through here, knock some of these back up. See, I did this one actually. I took a hammer and dolly and brought this right up. Actually, it was a dolly and a slapper. And I'll do that with like these and this one and this one here and this little guy over here. Um, and then I'll hit this again with the shrinking disc and I'll be able to see this time because that I had worked that one so much, some of my spots that were hit with the shrinking disc are now below level. So now I'm gonna start over a little bit, hit it with a shrinking disc and should just finish this right up. You'll see that uh, I didn't do the front edge with the shrinking disc. You've just gotta hammer and dolly this the best you can and then scuff it down. And it's gonna be just a little bit lumpy, but again, filler will, will take care of all of that. We're using the filler to smooth not shape, and that's very important. All right, okay, so I scuffed this down, did a little bit of hammer and dolly work, and then I hit it again with the shrinking disc. And as you can see now, there aren't all those spots. I mean, you can see there's some, there's some shrink there, but really I'm just hitting the high spots of my little scuff marks now. And that really did the trick. I was able to see where I was going, and I cannot feel anything in here now. She is <laughs> she's damn near perfect. Um, so we're gonna scuff it down. I'll do the best I can here on the nose and just kind of scuff a little bit of that out, but that's usually a thin area already. And then I do have a dent that I have to take care of right here. And then otherwise this thing will be perfect. You can see from the spraying of the water, I've got a little bit of rust happening here. We'll just sand that all back down. She is looking good. Okay, I finished the top side and I'm just gonna do some final scuffing now. Um, but I came over and cleaned the underside. There was some residue from the rubber mallet and a uh, bunch of scratches and stuff. And as you can see, you know, the underside is just as nice as the top. Now, if you look, I don't know if you guys can see this, but you can just barely make out where some of these creases were. Um, 
and this is where it, it kind of kinks into the, so you can see a little dent there. Now see that, there is not a corresponding dent like right there on the top side. What happens is, as you're working this with a dolly and slapper, that method will give you a smooth top and a slightly bumpy bottom. Picture if you were working with like a quarter inch thick piece of caramel or something, and you're working it from the bottom, you're smoothing out that top surface, but you're never gonna make that bottom absolutely perfect. But as you can see, it's pretty close. And what's interesting is I got all this trouble to do a great job and make it smooth top and bottom, and now that I'm done, these are pick hammer marks from someone else. Didn't see any of that till just now till I came to clean this up. See, what they've done a different thing, which is just pick it out and then grind it down. That thins out the metal. Luckily, they didn't do too bad with that and we don't have any trouble here. So, I, like I said, I had to flip. There's a dent here and I just knocked that out real quick from this side. I'm gonna smooth that from the top side and then I'm gonna scuff and sand this and we will be done. All right, we're all done. And I'll say one of my famous Chuckisms. Get some of that, baby. Look at that. This came out way better than I thought it ever would. Um, I worked it a pretty long time and I really took my time with it. Uh, we are two hours shy of two full days of work here. Um, and you can see where we have scuffed it down and you can still see these, you know, there's a couple little pick marks here. Not, well, they're not pick marks, but they're little tiny low spots. We could continue to go through and keep working them, but at some point you gotta just call it. And I always say this, it is not as perfect as it looks, but it is damn, damn close. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a layer of filler in on this whole area and then you're gonna block sand it all back off until you've got metal showing everywhere, but like, you know, some, some patches of thin 16th inch filler. And then you just spray it with a high build primer and block sand it down. There's actually, I was coming through, I did a really nice job on the nose this time, mostly because I knew I was doing this video, because you are gonna have filler here and you can, you can fill these little pock marks. This is the one that I missed right there. I, I took a bunch of them out. And I can just get back behind that with that dolly I showed you and a slapper and bring that up. And I'll probably doctor up a few little things on here before we finish it. Actually, Brent just noticed over here, I'll show you this, there's a divot right here because I was sanding this to get some of that little slight rusting off from where we were using our water. Right there, there's a divot. And that's from the flange being glued on there and pulling it before the glue separated. You'll get that if you take your bonnets apart sloppily and don't take your time. So I'm gonna have to bring that up. And then turns out over here, someone had done some previous work in the past that was just right behind where we stopped working. So there it is, she's all done. I'd much rather have this than a new reproduction. The shape on them is never quite right and they're sloppy around the edges, but we are right back where we need to be with this. So dolly and slapper, take your time. Um, no pick hammers, no grinding. And uh, that's how we do it here. I know I've made it look easy, especially in this video that's going a lot faster than the real thing. But the big key with something like this is just experience. Um, and I've been doing it for a long time and so you know when to stop and when to try for a little more. And the other reason this turned out so great was that it was a virgin wreck. It was a virgin center section. It had a couple little tiny dents here and there, but no one had ever ground on it, sandblasted it, tried to hammer and dolly it back out the wrong way. And that also makes a huge difference. So, that's it for this one. Hope you like seeing this come back together. God knows I did. I'm, I'm pretty proud of this. Thanks for watching.